Welcome back. I'm Carrie with Educating, keeping you on the cutting edge of education. Today I would like to share with you some tips on how to improve your pre-K child's vocabulary and conversation skills. Educating is here to keep you up to date on all your education needs. So if you like what you hear from us, please make sure you like this video, share it, subscribe, and most of all, click that bell so that you get notifications when we share more information with you. Let's jump in. So we're in the middle of spring and the school year is about to wind up. But right now, a lot of you have a pre-K child who you would like to prepare for kindergarten. And today I'd like to share with you uh, some ways that you can make the kindergarten year go much more smoothly by some simple preparation that you can start now so that your child will be a pro by the time kindergarten actually starts. I am the principal of an elementary school that is kindergarten through sixth grade and I am in my 25th year. So I have a lot of experience with kindergartners and how their school year starts and the different things that kindergarten teachers say to me that they wish parents would have done to prepare their children for a great kindergarten school year. I wrote an article that I posted on educating.com related to some different things you can do to help your child prepare related to their clothing, related to some procedures that they're not at all used to with even the daycare or preschool setting. Uh, so check that out. I'll put the link in the description of this video. But right now, what I really want to talk to you about is communication skills and vocabulary. The most important thing that kindergarten teachers share with me is that children just don't have a high enough vocabulary to really understand what they're saying to them during just general conversation. And uh, the easiest thing for you to do would be to just read to your child every night. But also some things that I want every parent to start doing right now and something that they can continue to do throughout the summer is help improve their vocabulary by having some basic conversations. So let's look at what that could really look like on a day-to-day -day basis. So when you're trying to increase your child's vocabulary, you literally have to expose them to more words. And just because words are, are too long, or maybe they're in a context that your child doesn't understand, by exposing them to higher level vocabulary, they will use their uh, intuition, their context clues, their thought processes to really help them recognize what those words mean and by being exposed to higher vocabulary your children will also start practicing those skills of how to figure out what those words mean so when you're in the car here's just a quick tip as you ride past signs point out the words and read them to your child as you drive by they will recognize the pattern of the McDonald's sign but in a kindergartner's mind, it is just a picture. We have to point out the words to them. So as you drive by, say, look, there's McDonald's. McDonald's starts with an M. And it'll make them make the connection of the words and the letters. Every kindergarten parent that I know sings the ABCs to their child. But how often are they truly looking at those letters in context? in the situation of reading words. Kindergartners don't come into, kindergartner, into kindergarten knowing how to read. They are going to learn how to read, but they have to understand the connection between letters and words. So a basic activity would be just to point out those signs that your child is used to seeing and read those words and at least point out the first letter of the words. That'll be a great way to start to build their vocabulary.
Another great activity I like to play with children to help build their vocabulary is a game called I'm going to the store. Now I'm going to the store can be a game that you make into anything but to make a basic vocabulary game you can say I'm gonna go to the store and I'm gonna buy five things. What five things can I buy at the store? And then as you and your child discuss those five things that you buy at the store, then it's time to increase it. Okay, we're not going to buy apples and bananas. What else can we buy? Then you can make those parameters even more specific where you can say, we're only going to buy it in the produce section. By doing things like this, limiting the area of the store that they're used to going into, it increases their vocabulary by making them think about the different categories that you're asking them to come up with the items from. So you're going to go to the store and you're going to buy five things from the produce section. So they are used to probably the bananas and the oranges, but then what about the other vegetables? What about the other things like lettuce? And then there's things in the produce section like um, dip and um, different uh, salad, uh, salad fixings. So when you're thinking about the different vocabulary that you can do just in a grocery store, it's really huge, especially if you shop somewhere like Walmart. Because you can say, I'm going to the store and I'm going to buy five things, but we're buying it in the hardware department. And so by doing a, just this simple game of going to the store and buying five things, it really gets your kid thinking about the different categories that uh, those nouns are going to be in, and it gets them really working towards increasing the number of words that they know and also associating them with a place that they frequent, a store. Now, I don't want you to stop with increasing your child's vocabulary with just things that you find in a store. I want you to also start thinking about words that are associated with non-concrete things, things like feelings and emotions. So a fun thing to do is I'm going to make a face and then I want you to tell me how I feel when I make this face. And so make a silly face, make an angry face, make a sick face, and then ask your child to describe your face. And that will help them make some other connections with some words that they might not be used to. They might be used to saying things like good and bad, but there are lots of ranges of emotions that are good and not just good. We need to increase your child's vocabulary because when it comes time for them to explain how things are going in school, we need some words better than good, bad, and nice. So emotion words are a great way to start, and you can just start with by saying, describe my face. So now that your child is going to have all these great vocabulary words and different things that they have to say, we really need to work on their communication and conversation skills. Having a conversation is something that we really learn. It's not something that uh, is intuition for us. It's something that we really work on becoming better communicators and having good conversation. So one of the things that would be great for you to work on with your child is having eye contact. You know, a lot of us are scrolling on our phone or um, we're watching TV and when our children ask us a, a question, we just answer the question without looking them in the face and in the eyes. So making eye, con eye contact is a really important way to prove that you're having one back and forth conversation with a person and you are truly listening. Conversation skills involved not just looking at each other and talking, but we also have to listen. 
Listening is an extremely important conversation skill that a majority of kindergartners really are not used to doing. They want to tell a story and they want to be the next one to tell the story and they want to be the next one to share something that they thought of, but they really don't want to listen so that they can make those connections. So if you can practice looking your child in the eye, making your child look you in the eye while you are speaking, and then practice listening to them and them having, having to listen to you, those are great starts to some great communication and conversation skills. So now that your child is looking you in the eye and they are uh, talking to you, they are listening to you, you are listening to them, now they have to have something to say. And I want you to help them practice with speaking in complete sentences. A lot of us speak when we're talking non-formally. Uh, we speak in just really choppy ways. Yep, that's it. Sure thing. Okay. But a true conversationalist has the ability to speak, speak clearly, and um, get that, real, that point across in full and complete sentences. So one thing that you can ask a child to do is when they answer uh, with a simple yes or no answer, just follow up with why or why do you think. So that dog over there looks like it's really angry, don't you think? And they'll say yeah or no. And then say, well, I think so, but why don't you think so? And so they're going to have to come up with reasons to, to back up their one-word answer. And those reasons will help them speak more clearly and in those complete sentences that will help them become a much better conversationalist. To ensure that your child is truly becoming a good conversationalist, you need to make sure that they know how to interrupt a conversation correctly. They are going to be in a classroom with 20 other children and there's probably going to be two adults and they're going to want their opportunity to talk. Well, in the classroom, they're probably going to have to learn how to raise their hand and so I'm not suggesting, suggesting that at home you have your child raise their hand, but they need to learn how to interrupt politely, saying things like, excuse me, or tapping you on the shoulder. We've all seen a video of a little boy going, Linda, 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 when he was talking to his mom, wanting her attention, wanting his turn to speak. But we can't have our children doing that in the classroom because they're going to wind up with a behavior consequence. So interrupting a conversation politely with excuse me, pardon me, mom, and knowing when to stop trying to interrupt uh, is going to be a great thing to start practicing now. When you want your child to, uh, go, to, acknowledge, to be acknowledged when, when they do say something like excuse me or pardon me, make sure that you use eye contact with them to acknowledge that you heard them, but it's not necessarily time for you to stop talking but let them know that you've heard them and that will get, keep them from that repetitive, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, mama, 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 so that they will know how to interrupt a conversation but still be polite and still be able to have good conversation skills. And the last thing I wanna share with you is a way to really reinforce all of these things that you're gonna be teaching your child and that's by prompting and praising. Don't forget to say things like, oh, thank you for using your manners, thank you for saying please and thank you, or you did that exactly how I wanted you to do. When I was talking to Uncle Ray, you said, excuse me, that was a great job. Also, you can prompt them to say things like start those conversations, we're going to see Uncle Ray today, Uncle Ray got a new car, he'd be happy if you asked him about it. So by prompting them to say things or start conversations or finish, finish a conversation by saying things like, make sure you tell Grandma thank you, 
prompting and praising is going to reinforce all of these different conversation skills that you are teaching your child between now and when school starts in August or September. I hope these tips were very helpful to you. We here at Educating are always trying to keep you on the cutting edge of education and sometimes that means using new materials, but sometimes it's just giving you tips for you to be able to use at home to make your child a more successful student. Remember, if you want to hear more things from Educating, like, subscribe, and hit the bell for those notifications. Thank you so much and we'll see you again next month.